really growing up, you know, I used to, you know, like many families, particularly dysfunctional ones, we would just sit and watch the TV all night. You weren't exposed to the same level of violence or sexual content, and certainly the adverts in things were far less sexualized. Television in the 50s was a, a totally different beast to what it is today. It was far less, shall we say, in your face. It was very much more family orientated. That to me was comprehensive newscast and comprehensive reporting, which I don't see nowadays. But I think Denzel Washington really summed it up recently. He said, if you watch the news, you're misinformed, but if you don't, you're uninformed. So really, it's a bit of a, a poison chalice now because it is so conditioned. It essentially defines how people perceive reality. It defines what they think is normal. It defines what they think is possible. I mean, you get this crazy situation where people will say, oh, you don't want to believe what's on TV. And of course, then what do they do? They completely believe what's on the TV. The influence that, that uh, the media have is, is almost like a drip feed thing. You might not see one programme and instantly sort of change the way you live your life or your outlook or your worldview, but it will be uh, like a, a drip, drip, drip effect of the way people's opinions are changed. It's, it's become so powerful that really, if this information was given to the public, the public could really take a lot of power back, they could really start to improve their lives. Telling the truth, not being part of a tell-lie vision, being part of what television was supposed to be is information that stands for the people. That's what I want to be remembered for.